Uh, for those who are not aware, if we're new, like we, you know, we are searching for a pastor. We're praying. We're searching. Um, but in the meantime, God is providing, right? God is providing in many ways, and one of those ways is through Tom McGall. So we're, we're just thrilled to have him back. Amen. Come on up, Tom. I'm wired. <laughs> All right. In an age of nobody's wired, I'm wired. I'll be honest with you. Let me know it's the only way to be. <laughs> Just about, maybe even a little longer, 40 years ago, we had our first meeting in this building. And we had it in this room. And uh, during worship, I saw an awful lot of people. <clears throat> got a little difficult for me. There were certain people that I see that are sitting with different people this morning, which is awesome. But, uh, yeah, that was hard. So you'll give me the grace to feel that this morning, I hope because it's messing up my message. And I just, you know, 40 years ago, I stood here and I preached the first sermon here, in this room, and uh, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And by grace, and people who have been here back then, and they're, oh, give him time, he'll figure it out. You know, I appreciate the grace that I was given by that congregation, some of them who are still here. But I would see things, I would see a couple that sat over there, right? This is hard, but I would see a little boy. <sighs> Running down the aisle, jumping up and down, worshiping, little boy. Wendy's little boy. Seeing those things really hard. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> great. Okay, you ready for a message? Amen. Okay, praise God. 40 years ago, my goodness. I'm going to write a book, How to Pray for Your Grandchildren. Right? How to Pray for Your Children? Give me a break. How to pray for your grand, your adult grand, your adult children, right? How to pray for your adult children or something like that. How to pray for your adult grandchildren. <laughs> Hallelujah. I do that every day. Every day. Okay. Um, Ephesians. Ephesians to me is a, um, is a very special book. It's more than just a book to me, it's a letter. It's a letter that doesn't have any chapters. It's a letter that has six pages. And I encourage you the next time you look at Ephesians, forget the chapters. Take it as a personal letter from Paul to you because that's how it's meant. It's meant as a letter, it's meant to be read from beginning to end. And it is, it is, how do I, what it means to me is it means beginnings. It was beginnings for me. The, the basic theme of Ephesians is, and you think of it as a six page letter, is the first three pages of the letter that God, that God has sent to you through the Apostle Paul. The first three pages are getting you to understand who you are in Christ and who Christ is and how awesome and how powerful he is, but also in you and what you can accomplish. And it's called sitting. There's a time to sit. And then there's a time when you get to the fourth chapter of Ephesians where it's a time to get up. Unfortunately, in many, many Christians' lives, they never get up. 
they're filled with head knowledge. And they're not filled to overflowing with the grace of God and the incredible power that is found in the name of Jesus that we just sang and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul talks a lot about the Holy Spirit. Some people ask me, well, John, how come every time you speak, you, you talk about the Holy Spirit? Hello? Hello? If you're going to, if you're going to stand, or you're going to, you're going to walk in, in, the, in what is written about you and about your, your, your God and his purpose in your life, if all you're going to do is sit there and take it in and take it in and take it in, no, you don't really need the Holy Spirit, but if you're going to walk, man, you're going to need the Holy Spirit. And if, and then, and then as, as Paul gets to chapter 6, it's about spiritual warfare, isn't it? Because once you've taken it in, once you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, once you begin to walk out the things that God is telling you, and only you, to walk out, and his purpose to bring glory to this earth through you. Then the enemy just just thrilled. Yay, yeah, go, go, Alice, yeah, go. No, the enemy is going to try to stop you. He's going to try to stop you. And when, when he likes to stop you, the, mo the, 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 the moment that he likes to catch you is the beginning. Ministries that are just starting there's a scripture, I believe it's in Revelation, that says the dragon waits at the womb of the woman who is giving birth. When ministry is being birthed, whether it's pregnancy care center back in the 80s, whatever it is, when you begin to hear God and you're sitting and you're hearing God and you begin to walk that out, the enemy is going to come against you like, like never before. So you better have, that's why Ephesians is sit, learn, take it in. Know your God. Know the power that is in the name of Jesus. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Know the Holy Spirit. And then begin to walk out what he's telling you to walk out. And sometimes that thing seems so big. But trust him. Trust him. I think that morning, that the first morning here, looked a whole lot different from this. We actually had pews. Yeah. We didn't put them in. They were here. There was an organ. I was telling somebody this morning, and those were speakers for the organ. Big organ pit over here. Big fence along the front so the people couldn't really attack the pastor. <laughs> yeah. So somebody, I don't know, I think it was me, but somebody put their foot on that. Just pushed it down. Because the one thing that Ephesians told me, I said, God, I'm doing okay over here in Philadelphia as an engineer. Why are these, there was 35 adults and 15 children, and then they said, you know, I, we think you should pastor us. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't pick me to pastor you. And I said, yeah, no, we are. And I thought, oh my God, what, what do I do? Where do I go? I was taking Bible classes at Philadelphia College of Bible. So I was a, you know, a student of the Word. And uh, I said, well, where do I go? And, I, and I, the mentor for me that earlier that time, year, about five years earlier, I had a mentor. And he, he said to me, he said, you know, my father was a, my father was a uh, Ephesians pastor. I said, well, what do you mean, an Ephesians pastor? He said, well, Every time he preached, it's not that he was in the book or the letter. It's that it reflected Ephesians in some way. Sit, walk, stand. Sit, walk, stand. Calling people up, stand up, stand against the enemy. So I said, oh, maybe I should look at Ephesians. So I began to study Ephesians. Now, when I was an engineer, I knew what my job description was. And I knew what was expected of me. And I knew if I had given, was given a project, I knew, I knew the path to complete that project. So with an engineering mind, I come into pastoring, 
And I thought, well, what's my job description? What's, what's the plan? Where are we going? How, how do we get there? And uh, all interesting question. All answered for me personally in the letter to the, to the Ephesians. <clears throat> I'm an Ephesians 4 pastor. Now, what's an Ephesians 4 pastor? Well, in Ephesians 4, it says in verse 12 that, that Christ appointed various offices, but he, he appointed pastors and he, he appointed teachers. Who appointed? It was not that I was elected, I was appointed. Amen. There's a difference. If I have an understanding that I'm appointed, then your vote doesn't count. I don't care whether you like me or not. I'm appointed. So it gives you a certain focus that way. And uh, it says that Christ appointed pastors and teachers for what? Why? Why, why did he appoint us to do this? Equipping the saints. If you're a saint, raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Equipping, wait a minute. My job is to equip you. Why? Uh, for the work of ministry. Let me get this straight. I don't have to do all the work. This is pretty cool. I, I like this. You know, I'm the pastor. Okay, I got to equip you. I got to... I, I think I can do that. I think I can, I can teach. I think I can pray for people. I, I think I can do that. For the work of ministry. Ephesians 4.12. Okay, great. That's my job. I'm, I'm, I'm my job description. Equip the saints for the work of service. This is Ephesians. Why? Why are we doing that? Well, Ephesians tells me the process. Uh, to fill the earth with the glory of God. Equip the saints to fill the earth with the glory of God. You're glory givers. You get, you get filled with knowledge. You get filled with the Holy Spirit. The time comes when you got to get up off of the, your uh, things and walk. Walk it out. If you, fi if you find you're facing difficulty, good, good. You're on the right track. Stand against whatever is coming against you in the name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It happened to me. It happened to me one, one night. We got filled with the Holy Spirit. I was, I, I've told this story before, but I will never forget it. We had, my wife and I, Eileen, we got filled with the Holy Spirit, came home that night, went to bed. Three o'clock in the morning, I wake up, there's an evil presence in the room that's trying to stop me at the birthing. And I was scared. My wife's asleep. I was scared. And I said, I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I command you to go. I mean, I can feel that even today. And it went. And I laid down and fell asleep. My wife, I remember, after me screaming that, <laughs> stayed awake, I guess, the rest of the night. I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> all I know, I had a good night's sleep. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, uh, I got sidetracked this morning because of this room, I think. But the Holy Spirit is here powerfully during worship this morning. Not just for me, I could hear your voices. You guys know how to worship. Hallelujah. Don't take that for granted. You are worshipers. The, um, let me get to it. Uh, when Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians, he wrote it from prison. And he had, when Paul first started his journeys, he had visited Ephesus and he had ministered to them the kingdom of God. And later he went back and he spent over two years, close to three years, which was unique in his travels. And he spent this time 
building church there. Preached the kingdom, came back for two to three years, and built church there. So he was not a stranger to them. He was not a stranger at all. He, he, uh, he knew them, and then he had heard that they were having some difficulties. How many know the world around you? What your eyes see? What your ears hear? The condition of the world? Rumors of war, rumors of war. Don't even mention politics. It's just a mess, isn't it? Same thing was happening in Ephesus. And, uh, but when you, when I look at this letter, I had, I had, originally I was going to preach on the, the first chapter, verses 15 to 23. You know what the problem with that is? If you look at verse 15, it says, therefore. Now, you can't preach 15 to 23 if you don't know what the therefore is there for. So that became the problem. What is the therefore there for? Well, let's just look at the Word of God. Do we have that? That's not happening this morning, right? Chapter, uh, chapter 1 of Ephesians, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, hallelujah, not by, he didn't run for office, by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus, who are faithful in Christ. Now, if, you're, if you want to key on any phrase in Ephesians, especially the first chapter, it's in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. How many would think that in Christ is pretty meaningful? Now, I might say in him, but him is Christ. So Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ. Are you faithful this morning in Christ? Jesus. That's a key. Grace. Hallelujah. Everybody say grace. Grace. Now I say it like grace. Grace. Where would we be without grace? So hard to get through it. One verse in this book. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Without grace, we are lost. He said, blessed, verse 3, Blessed be the God and our Father of the Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. Yeah. Father God has blessed us where? In Christ. With a couple of spiritual blessings. No? Every. Every. I don't know what you came in here this morning with, but you're leaving here with every spiritual blessing that is found in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, no, this is the way to open a letter. You're getting a letter from Paul, and he's got something he wants to say to you. Maybe some correction. Let's bless them. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he has chose us. Who chose you? In him. In Christ. Before the foundation of the world. Wrap your head around that. What? That we should be. Should be holy and blameless before him. How many know we're not? Thank God for grace again. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. I don't know how you read this letter to the Ephesians. Slowly, just let the letter preach. Amen? Amen? We're adopted as sons through Jesus Christ and daughter according to the purpose of his will to the praise of his glorious what? His glorious what? Grace. Grace is glorious. Hallelujah. Glorious. 
which he has blessed us in the belo beloved. In him we have this, okay, redemption through his blood. Amen. Not a light topic. Redemption. You're redeemed. Redeemed of the Lord through his blood. The forgiveness of your sins, your trespasses. Thank you, Jesus. According to the riches of his what? Grace. grace. <laughs> what did he preach about that morning? I think it was grace. Which he sprinkled a little bit. Cupful. Lavished upon us. Poured out upon us. Flooded us with his grace. Drenched us. Soaked us. Hallelujah. In all wisdom and insight. Making known to us the mystery of his will. I don't know what he wants. If I only knew what God wanted. It's not complicated. To fill the earth with his glory. To be what he's called you to be. What's he called me to be? Glory giver. He's called to be a glory giver. According to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven, things on the earth. Verse 11 is what? In him. In him. We have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. So that he who were the first to hope in, heaven, in Christ might be the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were what? Yeah. With what? Seal with the promise of the Holy Spirit. How important. He says all of that. He talks about redemption. He talks about grace. And then he says, he says all of this is sealed by the promised Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit has come. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit was here this morning during worship, without a doubt. I was, was I the only one that felt Verse 14, who is, the, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So that's how Paul begins the letter. How many know that from here it only gets better? How can it get better than that? Let's take a look at that and now I'll close with a prayer. Time flies when you're having fun. Okay. In verse 15, he says, For this reason, or therefore. What reason? Well, everything you just heard. Because I have heard of your faith, Paul wrote. He can say that about you this morning. Because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, community. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Now here's his prayer. The first, that. There's two that's. Verse 17, that. My prayer, to, my Paul's prayer for you this morning, that. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit. That just any spirit? Is that the Holy Spirit again? of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Wisdom. Revelation. You don't get wisdom at Yale. I don't know why I picked Yale. If you don't get wisdom at Yale, revelation only comes by the Spirit. So the first that, first that you would be open to the Holy Spirit of revelation and wisdom. Has that ever happened to you? Just when you thought you knew it all? Forty years ago, I knew it all. Today, I don't know anything. There was a difference between being given and being open. 
You can be given the Holy Spirit, but are you open? The Holy Spirit is first before all that follows. Paul is saying, be open to the Holy Spirit, the source of revelation and wisdom. That's a whole sermon in itself. But I'm going to move on. Second, that having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. We used to sing a song called, Open the Eyes of My Heart. What the heck does that mean? Is there eyes in my heart? What? Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. And so I got curious about that years and years ago. What did he see? I mean, I know he's Jesus, but he was human too. What did he see that Father was doing? Can I see what Father is doing? Do I have a heart that's enlightened that it might see what Father God is doing? Most Sundays, when I'm at my son's church, I'm on the prayer team. And at the end of the service, we're called up. Two couples will stand over there, and another pair will stand on that side. Anyone? I'll close the service with a couple of worship songs. And during that time, people can come up to receive prayer. So I'm standing, I'm, this was just a couple of weeks ago, I'm standing there and I'm looking around the congregation, and my eyes fall on a particular brother. And the Lord says, go, go pray for him. Well, well, he's, you know, bring him up. And pray for him. I can't walk up in front of everybody and do that. It's embarrassing. So I didn't do it. So at the end of the service, I walked over to him and his wife. I said, I've, I've got to be honest with you. I said, I felt the Lord was telling me to come pray for you. But I didn't do it. I want to confess that to you. And they both started crying. And... Uh, he said, I would have come over to you, but I can't walk. I want a prayer, but I can't walk. And uh, he had been injured. He wasn't that way all forever. He was a young man. So I prayed with him. I think that's what we're talking about when we're talking about seeing with the eyes of your heart. I, the things that I saw said, no, don't do it. But then the conviction <laughs> just kept beating in me. And, and, and you go and you go and you do it. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart. We have the eyes of our heart enlightened that we may know. That there's things that we can see. If we would just ask, God would just show me. Is there someone here this morning? <clears throat> Another church that I pastored at, we, we actually would sit up here. The, the pastors sit up on stage, on platform. Now this is stupid. I, I know they're all looking at you, you know, and you're doing worship. I'm oh, I better look like I'm really worshiping. You know, those kinds of things go through your head. And then God said, Well, will you, will you stop thinking about yourself and will you, just, just, will you just start looking? Just look on worship. Let me show you what's going on there, not here. You see a lot. You see a lot during worship. If you're looking, you guys can look. Hallelujah. Having the eyes of your heart, verse 18, enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, that I might see what Father God's doing. Paul is praying that the eyes of our heart be opened through an entry of the Holy Spirit of wisdom and revelation. What I like to do is I like to pray for you this morning because the Holy Spirit is here without a doubt. And I'll get to that maybe next month. <laughs> no. Um, <clears throat> That you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? 
and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe. It's called the, that's known as the three watts in Paul's prayer. Hope of his calling. Riches of his glory and inheritance. And the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe. My mom used to shake the keys and say, John, you're done. Now my watch does it. <laughs> Verse 20, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. That's resurrection power. Yes. You say resurrection power? Resurrection, resurrection power. power. You believe it. Yes. And seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. Far above all rule. Authority and power and all of hell, dominion, and above every name that is named not only in this age but also in the one to come. Power that exceeds the limitations of earth. Boy, it's never clearer than it is today how inept man is on earth. And every demon in hell runs and screams from the saints that believe what Paul is writing here and praying for them. That's it. There's not a demon in hell that stands a chance. Hallelujah. 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 Far above all the world authority. Put all things under his feet and gave him, Jesus, as head over all things to the church, which is his body. And we are the fullness of of him. Glory. You just can't Glory. read right by that. The fullness of him. Thank you. you know who you are? <laughs> Hallelujah. This is who you are. I didn't say it. I read it. Paul, the apostle, appointed by God, says this. Not just for those Ephesians. But for you this morning, sitting here right now, read this letter, will you? Will you read this letter? Read it. Read it. Just read it. And I guarantee you, you'll want to read it again and again. And you're going to want to dig deep and dig. The digger you, the digger, the deeper you dig, a solid. Then, then get up. Walk. Walk it. Stand against the enemy and tear down strongholds and lives of the people. That's what you're called for. That's you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.